Welcome to What's Working, everyone. I'm Kim Marston. What's Working is brought to you by Coastal Alabama Community College, and our show focuses on workplace and workforce trends. We're always on the lookout for businesses that are doing something very well and seeing what we can learn from them. Uh, What makes them special and is there an idea I can take from this business that I can apply to my own workplace, that I can apply to my own workforce, to my own clients, to my own customers, etc. So looking for the trends and looking for the companies and the people that follow the trends that shape the workplace. As a special edition today in the tail end of the show, the very last segment, I'll have a commentary run by David Webb. David is talking about online personalities, how you appeal to people online. Well worth sticking around to make sure you hear David's commentary. Uh, He's done one before, and I think we're going to make sure he keeps coming back. There's no doubt as a citizen of this town, of this part of the state, that when you drive around, you see advertisements for lawyers. And they're not solicitations, by the way. I learned this distinction a uh, solicitation is when someone come up and comes up and actively asks you for something or for business. An advertisement is not a solicitation. But a lot of these advertisements for personal injury lawyers are, well, they're everywhere. They're skinned on buses. There's, they seem to be nine out of 10 billboards. Uh, they're in the publications that you get. And the implication that I get from these things is that people must be slipping and falling and there must be car accidents going on much more than I'm aware based on the amount of um, uh, advertisements there are out there. And uh, I wanted to learn a little bit about this. I wanted to get to the bottom of this. Is there that much business to go around this community? Because I even know some personal injury attorneys that don't advertisement advertise in these extraordinary ways that every one of us sees them on the buses, on the billboards, hears, sees them on television. They seem to dominate the airwaves between 4 and 7 p.m. If you're going to watch local news, you're going to see a personal injury thing. Anyway, the business is huge. So I tried to work my network to see who I could find and who may be willing to talk to me about this and was introduced via email to David Green. David is the founder and CEO of Green and Phillips Law Firm, They've done quite well. And David, as I learned in meeting with him, getting kind of prepared for the show, has a non-traditional story of how he got into the business. He was a, let's say, uh, a different type of business person with a landscaping company and owned his own landscaping company prior to deciding to go to law school. I'm eager to hear this story from David. So it's a very atypical approach to the way he got into law. We're going to talk about... uh, where do you find your clients? Does all this advertising work? Is it necessary or, or, or do you do it for fear of someone else taking it if you stop doing it? I want to talk to him about uh, how he stays motivated to do a job, which can be, I would suspect, a very disheartening job considering the number of horror and sad stories that he must get, slipping and falling, accidents in cars, etc. They're, uh, they're not good news, and he, is, he gets bad news on a regular basis, and that's the core of his business. How do you stay immune to that? So we're going to learn a little bit about the personal injury attorney. We're going to learn it from David Green and uh, their business model and what works for them. We'll meet David when we come back from break. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. What's Working is brought to you by Coastal Alabama Community College. We'll be right back. Think about how people really see you. The kid at the drive-thru just sees a coffee drinker. Please move forward. Your local barista sees the person who loves a smiley face in their latte. See you next time. It's kind of the same way with insurance. Other insurance companies just see a customer, but a State Farm agent sees more. They see you as a neighbor. Your State Farm agent is here to get to know who you really are so they can help life go right. Call me, State Farm agent Allison Horner, and Mobile at 666-1616. Hey, this is Cam Marston. If sales in your business comes from prospecting to create leads that lead to sales, I want to tell you about Sales Up Coach, a cloud-based system created for the next generation of sales professional. There's a big difference between being busy and being effective. And Sales Up Coach helps salespeople who rely on prospecting uncover which of their activities produce the greatest results. 
Over time, Sales Up Coach's machine learning hones salespeople's schedule to focus only on activities that generate the most bang for the buck. Your sales team interacts with Sales Up Coach on their smartphone, and sales managers can instantly generate reports to see who is on goal and who may need additional support. Go online and take a look at this new and very powerful sales tool. Go to salesupcoach.com slash Cam Marston. Watch your sales team's productivity change. Is your business growing? Does your existing metal building need an update? Expansion? New roof? With almost 20 years of experience, Mosley Building Systems is the leading metal building contractor along the Gulf Coast. We are your local design build experts. From expansion to new construction or repairs, we can guide you through all aspects of your project. Mosley Building Systems works with each client to fulfill their vision. For more information, go to MosleyBuildingSystems.com. We're back. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston, and What's Working is brought to you by Coastal Alabama Community College. On the line with me is David Green. He's the founder and CEO of Green & Phillips. David, thank you so much for your time. Welcome to What's Working. Thanks for inviting me on. There are plenty of people in this listening audience of Mobile and Baldwin County. It goes all the way into Biloxi and Pensacola on the other side. Perhaps they're familiar as well with you, who see you through your advertisements, the uh, the promotions that you do, the mass marketing in our, our area here. And I want to begin with a question that came to me or, or an observation that came to me many years ago when I was working with LexisNexis. They were telling me about the new changes in defense systems of cars, whether it be anti-lock brakes, whether it be uh, sensors that prevent you from uh, wandering across the road, makes your 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 your, uh, your steering wheel vibrate or something like that. And they predicted a great reduction in the number of car accidents. Now, car accidents seem to be a big part of your business. Are you seeing your business change as a result of these defense systems, new technology, new defense systems in cars? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, we have not seen a decline. Uh, you, you still have people uh, that are uh, driving under the influence of alcohol, unfortunately. Uh, it still doesn't always uh, stop someone who is uh, not paying attention. Maybe they're texting. <clears throat> Maybe they're talking on the phone and not uh, not paying attention, not using a hands-free function. And so while it may have um, prevented some accidents, and we certainly hope it has, our business has not seen a decline. Uh, we have constantly, we're constantly seeing uh, individuals who are, you know, driving under the influence of alcohol, hitting someone, um, you know, looking in the back seat, doing something that they shouldn't be doing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's not been a decline. Uh, I would almost say that we've had an increase, and it may not be because of um, <clears throat> because of uh, the the the. Uh, changes in cars and that type of thing, but you're you're all people are going to be people. Accidents are going to happen. People are going to run red lights. Unfortunately, uh, we see it um, we see it all the time. And so, unfortunately, it probably hasn't had that great of an effect on our business. What the the mass marketing that you do? Uh, what impact does it have? How, can, can you measure the amount of calls that you get or inquiries you get as a result of that mass marketing? Is it is it if you stop doing, your competitor will take it from you, uh, so you have to keep doing it? Or is there a genuine, uh, does, does it lead to new business? Is it an a effective uh, you, tool for you? Well, I, I think, first of all, um, as a native Mobilian, um, my, my loyalty is to the citizens here of Mobile County uh, and surrounding areas, of course. But I want to make sure that we're getting a message out to people that perhaps just don't know a lawyer and, and just do not have uh, a knowledge of a, of a neighbor or a friend or something of that nature. Um, you know, th these, you know, these, these folks, and I, and I really equate it to folks like my dad, my dad was a, a 40, uh, he worked 42 years at international paper company. Um, didn't, uh, didn't know a lawyer. Um, and so folks like dad and, and my, my family, uh, you know, I think it's it's a more of a public service, and you're getting the word out that if you've been injured in any way, uh, you know, call us or call someone, call a local law firm that can make a difference for you. 
uh, we're glad to meet with you anytime. So I think it's just a necessary service for the community. But yes, I mean, our business is, is great. We're blessed. Um, you know, we're, we're very busy and we're thankful for it. And there's work to go around amongst all your colleagues. The other companies that I see that do what you do, the other uh, attorneys out there that I see that do what you do, are they having the same success? Is, the, is, a, is it a rising tide that is raising all ships? Well, I think it is, and I think any time that you have, uh, and I, like I said, I don't like to use the word competitor, but any time you have great folks in the market, in which we do, we have some great ones out there. Uh, there's some that you know maybe maybe don't do it as well as others, but we have some great lawyers in our community, um, and um, you know I, I believe that we all help each other. Uh, we're generally all friends. We all get along. And uh, from the plaintiff's bar, we always get, you know, get along with the defense guys and, and girls as well. But um, I think uh, I think it I think it is a rising market, I do believe. And uh, I'm curious if they, the, the you, you mentioned a fall, an injury of some sort uh, and that there is there can't be compensation for everyone that gets injured is help me understand the nature of how you qualify clients. Well, I think that's a great question. Um, you know, if you're at your own home and you step off the back porch and you twist your knee and tear your knee, um, you really, it's kind of, that's kind of on you. Okay. Uh, let's say that you're, uh, employed by a, a large manufacturer and you're, you're going downstairs, um, and you step off the, the last rung and you twist your knee Well, you're at work and you're furthering that, that employer's business. And so you would be entitled to workers' compensation benefits under the law, the laws of the state of Alabama, in which there would be insurance for that. So there's sort of a subtle difference. Um, but yeah, you're right. You're not always uh, going to be compensated. You can, you know, hopefully not. This doesn't happen, but you can be, you know, peeling a potato for for dinner and cut your hand, and that's on you. But if you're doing that at work, that may actually be a, a case, depending on how bad you're you're injured. Now let's uh, talk about you're furthering that. The yeah, you're in furthering the employer's uh, business, but you're at work and it's an employee uh, compensation law. Uh, is that the term you used? Did I get that correctly? Yes, it's workers', workers compensation comp. workers comp. law. Yeah. Workers' Compensation Act. And so that's that's a law in the state of Alabama that covers workers uh, like my father who, who, who worked at the paper mill uh, or any – if you're employed – uh, by a company, um, and I think these days it's you know, there's five or more employees, then workers' compensation would be in effect, and then you would have certain benefits um, if you're if you're injured on that job. You might be injured in a car accident, and of course in that situation there may be essentially two claims. But if you're injured furthering the employer's business, then you are covered under workers' compensation. Do you get involved in that? Or is that something that the employer in the HR department and somebody like that takes care of? Are you necessary in that environment? Boy, that's a great question. That really is. And people commonly ask that question. They, they assume that the employer is going to take care of your problem. While the employers in our community are wonderful people, wonderful companies out there, they tend to hand it over, and they have to because they have insurance companies that they're paying for workers' compensation benefits. So the claim, <clears throat> while it may initially be handled by the EHR department, it is then handed, handed over to the workers' compensation insurance company, who in, then, then in turn has their representatives, their case managers, and their claims handlers that will be dealing with your case. <clears throat> that company while they're doing what they have to do under contract, may not be fairly compensating the worker, uh, and the worker certainly is entitled, many times they're entitled to much more money than ever, they've ever been offered uh, uh, by, the, by the adjuster initially, if they have a lawyer involved. If they have a lawyer. So Correct. There are, uh, it wouldn't be hard for you and me to drum up somebody not far from us, at wherever you are and wherever I am, who would say the cost of products, the cost of services, the cost of medicine, the cost of everything is exorbitantly high these days. And I know what I pay for insurance for my family of six uh, due to the defense that many of these people have to play uh, to prevent getting sued or, or, or these the, the costs of what you're mentioning. 
there's a, so there's another side to the story. Defend that point of view. Defend, uh, if, if I had an, a, another, an, a, a doctor, easy one, in front of me, what would your response to his or her uh, comment like that be? Well, unfortunately, uh, we all pay, uh, we all pay, you know, gosh, I'm a business owner and we, we pay for insurance and insurance is supposed to take care of, um, uh, if you make a mistake or if someone's injured, uh, the insurance company is supposed to do that many times insurance companies, you see the model as I see it is uh, from, from all the years of having done what I do, the model is that, uh, the insurance company charges a premium. Um, and boy, pay, people pay, 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 pay. And then when you need it, sometimes they're not willing to pay exactly what the claim may be worth. Uh, we see it all the time. You know, just if, if there wouldn't be a need for people like us as plaintiff's lawyers, um, if insurance companies would fairly compensate individuals for accidents or injuries. Um, it's just a, there's a real need <clears throat> for individuals to have representation that understand the rules. You see, the insurance company, they all understand the rules. They understand that, you know, we can take premiums and not pay out money and deny claims. You know, we always talk about deny, delay, defend, and that's what a lot of companies do. Now, I'm not saying all insurance companies are bad. They're not. But there's some, there's a, there's some bad ones out there. Um, but we see it all too often that insurance companies are not going to tell you the complete truth. Well, we're running into break. Folks, you're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston. I got David Green on the line with me. He's the founder and CEO of Green and Phillips, law firm here in town. What's Working is brought to you by Coastal Alabama Community College, and we'll be right back. Green and Phillips is always looking for quality and motivated employees. It takes a lot of people to keep a busy law firm running smoothly. And it's not just attorneys. There are paralegals and accountants and receptionists and assistants. And that's not everybody. If you're interested in joining a legal team, Coastal Alabama Community College can prepare you well for many of these jobs. They offer degrees and certificates in criminal justice, business administration, paralegal, and business technology. Most of these programs are designed for immediate entry into the workforce, but some of these classes will transfer to a four-year college. They even offered paid and unpaid internships for paralegals. To learn more about these exciting opportunities, visit Coastal Alabama Community College's website at coastalalabama.edu or visit any one of their campuses. What's Working with Cam Marston is brought to you by Stella Artois Beer. Stella Artois is a perfect beer for celebration. Nothing caps off a big sale, hitting your incentive goals, or a profitable quarter like a round of Stella's. Brewed first in 1708 as a special Christmas brew, today Stella is a gift for everyone to enjoy year-round. Stella Artois. Find it wherever fine beer is sold. Investing. Connecting. Leading. Providing. The Community Foundation of South Alabama brings together philanthropic assets to make Southwest Alabama a better place to live, work, and play. We link donors to philanthropy. Working with you, we build communities. Contact us at communityfoundationsa.org. Coastal Alabama Community College is three amazing colleges combined into one incredible institution. And that means we're all together. For more sports, 15 more locations, more friends, more one-on-one -on -one time with instructors, way more activities, more courses, a lot more courses, and more success for all of us. Pretty much more of everything. Coastal Alabama Community College is where everyone is. All together! Coastal Alabama Community College. Register today. We're back. I'm Cam Marston. You're listening to What's Working, which is brought to you by Coastal Alabama Community College. David, just prior to the break, you were about to give us an example of an insurance company that's, let's say, uh, tried to, uh, I don't know what the correct terminology is. I'm not in the, the, the end of the lingo, but tried to deny the correct payment to someone who had been injured. Go on with your example, please. Well, I can speak to that. Uh, there was a young young lady that I represented, and there's some confidentiality 
that I, I have to travel within. I can't give all the details, can't give the names and that sort of thing. But there was a case I was involved in not too terribly long ago uh, where a young lady uh, pulled up to a stoplight. Uh, the light turned green, and she pulled out, and a very large truck uh, hit her in the door. And uh, because of that, uh, she's 19 years old at the time, and uh, because of that, she had a severe brain injury, and uh, which rendered her a complete quadriplegic. And um, she had <clears throat> almost a million dollars in medical bills, you know, and, and the lifelong care of being taken care of. And so the family uh, retained our law firm. Uh, one of my partners, Britt Bethay and I, uh, were, were, we worked the case. And uh, as we got involved, we found out that initially the family was called and they were told that, hey, look, um, we've got a, a million dollar policy here. Uh, you know, we're willing to, you know, to, to make sure that that, you know, we pay that and, um, you know, hopefully that'll take care. We're so sorry this happened. Well, as we got involved, uh, we, we, we did what's called discovery and we were able to find out there was much, much more coverage available, which was where the insurance company was just basically not, you know, telling it exactly the way it was. Um, and so, um, with that, we, we were able to achieve a nine and a half million dollar resolution to take care of this young lady's problems, who is, you know, bedridden, has to have nursing care, um, and it's just a very, very sad situation. But that's just an example. And I'm not saying that, listen, the insurance companies, these folks do a great job, but they're in the business to make money, and sometimes they won't tell you everything. Um, and, and they certainly didn't tell these folks everything. Thank God we were involved and we were able to help these folks get what she needed. So you, just, that's just one example. Your business model seems to rely on um, people who just have had awful luck, awful circumstances. They've been victims of an accident. They've been victims of a fall. And I'm curious if it takes a toll on you to, to have to rely on these downtrodden stories to uh, to, uh, to earn a living that day in and day out, you're stepping into the workplace knowing you're going to get some sad stories told to you. And uh, versus wins or victories, you're, you're saddled with, uh, you know, bad luck stories. And it has to happen. That's the nature of your work. Tell me about how you Stay resilient in uh, in that it, the the fact that you're not depressed all day every day or just emoting well, <laughs> all day every day. I I, I wonder how yeah. you I wonder how you do it. I mean, many uh, uh, doctors tell me you just kind of get immune to people's pain. You get immune to the death that may surround you if you're <clears> in that business. Is that the same with you? Well, it's really not. I have a strong faith, and I'm a uh, strong, a devout Christian, and uh, my law partner is as well, and we. We're a Christian-based law firm, and we, we pray for our clients. We pray with our clients. And, uh, you know, we, we recognize that uh, these things are going to happen, and uh, we can lift them up. We can uh, help them in a bad situation. But I'll tell you, it does take a toll, and you just, you just got to pray up is what I say. You got to pray up, and you got you to be prepared every day. Um, I'll never forget the very first time, and it's almost emotional to, emotional to me now, but, um, you know, years ago, I'll never forget the first child death case that I ever handled. And uh, it was one of the hardest things I, I've ever handled before. I, I was, um, and I won't give too many details, but there was a, a young child that was walking with a, with a parent and a vehicle came around a curve and, and just clipped the child and killed the child right in front of the parent. And uh, just a horrible, horrible, heartbreaking thing inside. So I, I, I met with the family and I, I immediately left. And I had a, uh, my, my son now, who is almost 19 and a you know college about to start college and, and play football as a quarterback. Um, he um, he was very young at the time, and I just went home and held him. And so it, it, it's heartbreaking because you just don't know uh, these things happen. We you know it's just a you, you don't know when it's your turn or your time, but. It is tough, and I've talked to my doctor friends um, that are believers like like myself, and uh, they they feel the same way. It's just um, it's it's tough that it happens, and uh, but it can be. You can have some bad days. I can assure you, you really can. But you you just got to. Uh, I, I rely strongly on my relationship with the Lord, and uh, and uh, just that that pulls me through that. And 
I, I consider it an honor to take care of these folks and these families. I really do. I have a handful of friends that are in your business. I have, and I'm aware of others in town that, that do this. They all seem to articulate their strong faith. It seems to be a key point of people in your business. Is that your observation as well? I think so. I think so. I think you, you have to have a strong faith because um, if you didn't, I don't know how I could make it in doing what I do. Uh, it it uh, truly, um, it's, it's very important to me and uh, it absolutely makes all the difference uh, uh, for, to me. And uh, just the, the it's, it's truly an honor though to be able to help people. Um, it really is. It's just an absolute, I consider it a blessing. And uh, you just you have to see um, you have to see good in everything. I, I we we try to do that, and uh, some days are, are tougher than others. Though I can tell you that. Tell me about this. All all tenets of the of the major historical faith are big advocates of forgiveness. Where does that come into your your practice? Well, absolutely, uh, but there's also accountability, and uh, absolutely forgive people, uh, and and that's not a problem. I, we're certainly glad to do. As a matter of fact. Uh, the, the case, and I'm, I'm looking across the street right now at my former building. Actually, we still own the building. Uh, but I remember the day we resolved the case I spoke of earlier of the young lady. And I don't know where the family was uh, as far as their faith. Uh, they had been through a lot. But I do know that uh, the defendant, as we're driving out, I drove out with the family to, to just go take a, a break from the, the, the finish of the mediation and uh, the resolution to go and, and just grab a cup of coffee. And uh, the defendant walked out and said, hey, I just want to apologize. And I said, man, you know, listen, it, it wasn't it wasn't intentional. We know it wasn't intentional. So I forgive you. And, uh, you know, but accountability is another thing. I believe uh, holding someone every, you know, if I made a mistake and hit someone or, or caused an injury, and I would want to be forgiven. But my goodness, I certainly want to want to be I mean, I, you, know, you need to be held accountable, and that's that, that's part of, of what we do is we hold people accountable, we hold companies accountable, and uh, I think that's just honorable, and uh, I think that's the thing we should do. I had a uh, insurance uh, document that I kept in my car that was required by my insurance car, my auto insurance car company, and it had all the data and details of my car insurance information on one side. And on the back, it said, if you ever get in an accident, do the following thing, and number one was don't apologize and don't take accountability for it. That was printed on the document mm. itself. Tell me about mm. that. How do you feel about that? Well, I think that first of all, um, and, and yes, there's a time for that. There's a time uh, to to ask for forgiveness, I believe. And there's a time for uh, to to handle the business at hand. I think uh, you know we always recommend folks in accidents. Uh, don't you know? Don't sit there and give a some statement or whatever. Uh, you, you wanna you wanna you know, number one. Uh, you know, make sure that you're okay. Make sure that you get the treatment. Make sure the other party's okay. And so then go through the process of getting the police there, getting the treatment you need. And then at, at some point, if you think you need to talk to a lawyer, then talk to a lawyer. But you know, I don't know that um, in the the world of what we 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 have to deal with. Um, that running out there and saying, oh, gosh, I'm so sorry, you know, well, you may be, and there's a time for that. There's a time for everything. I don't know that that's the proper time to, to do that. Is it because uh, apologizing when you may have clearly been clearly been in the right immediately puts you in legal jeopardy? I mean, isn't that what we were right. supposed to want to do is to apologize, to make amends, and all the f models of apology say do it as quickly as possible. But the legal model right. is don't do it until... I hate to say it, but until the money's done. Well, I think there's a, there's a, um, you know, there's a, there's a level of apology, I believe. And Hey, I'm sorry, this happened can be translated into, Oh my gosh, he said that he caused it. You know, I, I, something may happen. I'm like, gosh, I'm really sorry this happened, but you know, it might be that, you know, you're and so the translation of what you're saying could really come back in court or in a deposition or what, Hey, he ran out and said he was sorry. Well, yeah, the point was, I was sorry that this happened. And, and, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, I, Hey, I caused this, but if you did at some point, you should, you should fess up, but, uh, you just, you just want to, you, you may not know 
if you caused it. <laughs> and if you run out and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, people say, hey, you can you apologize? And so then you've, so you've really hurt a situation where you need to be compensated because the other person injured you and it's going to cost you money. Um, and so it may actually be their fault. Are there any cases that you don't uh, what do you need to hear in a case that says, no, we can't, we don't want this, or we, we're unable to help in there? When someone presents you a a situation and you just say, no, I, I can't help you there. Well, uh, there's there's a number. There's a number of things. Um, we, we have certain people that, um, you know, if, if I, I can read that they're not being truthful, and, and we don't have that very often, but uh, if you if you can recognize that someone's not being truthful, um, you know, if we look and run it through our system and we see that we uh, believe someone is not, you know, maybe they've had more cases than the average person has, uh, that it raises, you know, some red flags. But, um, you know, and there's certain folks, of course, um, you know, uh, if we have a conflict, some type of uh, personal friend or our church or someone that we know well, we're going to disclose to our client, hey, we have a conflict. Um, this person is my friend and I can't, you know, we can't pursue a claim against their insurance because that wouldn't be appropriate. So there are cases we don't take, but, um, you know, we want to, we want to sit down and talk to folks and help them and meet their needs. It might be that this law firm is not the proper fit for them. There may be another law firm, one of our friends that, uh, that would be able to meet their need. When we come back from break, I want to hear, David, your transition from landscaping into the business of law. And I also want to hear your thoughts on marketing, because you guys are a powerhouse in marketing. And perhaps there's something our listeners can learn from their own business on your marketing approach. You're listening to What's Working. I'm Cam Marston, brought to you by Coastal Alabama Community College. We'll be back after this break. The Community Foundation of South Alabama links donors to philanthropy, builds networks across eight counties, and builds dreams for those in need. Through our donors' gifts, we make investments that enhance our community via initiatives with broad impact. Working with you, we build communities. Contact us at communityfoundationsa.org. First Protective is a multidimensional financial firm specializing in risk management. We blend all dimensions of financial services, offering our producers diverse products to create multiple revenue streams. If you're a life insurance producer or in the traditional investment business looking to grow your business, we can help. Call me, Jay Stubbs, at 251-604-7024 or find me online at www.firstprotective.com. Life insurance is one of those subjects that make people want to change the subject rather than admit they probably don't have enough. I'm State Farm agent Allison Horner, and that's why I focus on how the benefits of life insurance actually live on by asking people to think in terms of life without having to sell the house insurance or life without having to give up college insurance. Find out how the benefits of life insurance can live on for your family. Call me, State Farm agent Allison Horner, and get to a better state with State Farm. David Green is the founder and CEO of Green and Phillips Law Firm here in Mobile. David, you got your start in the landscaping business, and I can sounds like your career has not been a straight, uh, direct aero flight path. Tell me about getting started in the landscaping and what got you here. Well, that's kind of a neat story. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, um, <clears throat> I, I was uh, fortunate that my parents sent me to the University of South Alabama. I ran track out there. Um, and then after finishing uh, with a with a marketing uh, degree, um, I uh, went into sales briefly, and then realized that I, I wanted to work for myself. And during law school, or excuse me, not during law school, back up during uh, undergraduate, um, I uh, had always mowed yards, and so I was able to uh, leave the, the company I was working for, start my own lawn service. Um, started with a um, as a matter of fact, I had been moved to Birmingham to do sales, and I just really didn't like it. Birmingham's a great city, but I, it didn't fit me at the time. And so when I moved back to Mobile, I, I came down um, on Spring Hill Avenue, and there was a little pawn shop there, and uh, there was a lawnmower sitting out front. And uh, so I, I pulled in, and I 
bought the lawnmower and bought a used weed eater and bought a used blower. And I started uh, started mowing yards, uh, going around and you know, in the legal business, you don't solicit, and it's inappropriate, and you just can't do it. But in the lawn service business, you can. And so I would knock on doors of businesses. I would uh, go around, and, and so I built up a, quite a clientele and uh, wound up uh, having a pretty good size operation. We employed about 15 people and had, you know, five or six trucks on the road and did landscape jobs and lawn maintenance. And uh, so... Uh, it was when I met, uh, actually, I was at Dauphin Way Baptist Church on a Sunday night, or actually Sunday morning, excuse me, um, in in May of 1991. And um, I was mowing yards and doing landscape work. And I, I met a beautiful, beautiful girl from Birmingham who has who became my wife and is still my wife. We've been married 27 years. And uh, so uh, when I first married, I mean, was first married, I mean, gosh, I was in the landscaping business. And so I did that for a couple of years and then came home one day. And um, after having done a, a really large job out off Hillcrest Road and realized that I, I'd been thinking about it, and I told my wife, Tanya, I said, uh, sweetheart, I want to go to law school. And she said, uh, law school? <laughs> David Green, you'll have to study if you go to law school. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, I'm ready. So, um, so the transition was I applied to law school. I got into Jones Law School in Montgomery, who now is an accredited private law school. And um, my wife is a dietitian by by her education and background and training. And so she was, she worked as a dietitian and actually worked two jobs. And I commuted to law school in Montgomery. And uh, so um, I did that for um, a, you know, the three years. And uh, so did you give up the landscaping company in order to go to law school or was it still running in the background? No, I sold it. And I guess I left that out. Not a very good storyteller some days, but I I left the, I, I decided to sell the landscaping company, sell all the equipment. And so we sold the company and, um, and it, and it wasn't for very much money. I can tell you that. But uh, it did help me a little bit to, um, to, to, to pay some of the expense to go to law school. And uh, so I've worked hard. I came from, from humble roots. Uh, we, you know, we've, we've, my entire family's worked very hard. And so I think that helps me understand, um, you know, just I'm just an ordinary guy. I'm not some, you know, big cheese lawyer. I'm just an ordinary guy. But I, I can understand what folks are going through when people are hurting uh, and people are trying to work paycheck to paycheck. You know what? I've been there. I've been there and understand it and I can appreciate it. And I think that helps me make a difference for folks. So tell me this, you can't, you, you said you couldn't solicit as an attorney. You could as a, as a landscaper, a lawn maintenance company, but as an attorney, (laughs) you can't, what do we describe these uh, advertisements all as? Is it not solicitation? It it is not. It is not. Uh, It's as a matter of fact, I'm on the committee that is actually that is rewriting all the rules for for advertising for the state of Alabama for for our bar. And uh, we're actually making a few changes. Uh, Those changes will be coming out in the next uh, probably next within the next year. But as it has been uh, decided by the U.S. Supreme Court that advertising of lawyers is absolutely okay. Um, It's appropriate if it's done tasteful and done properly. And so uh, there are some little caveats of things we're going to be changing in the future. Can't really talk too much about it. It's kind of confidential right now. But um, the uh, but as, as far as any other business, if you're a lawn maintenance company or if you're a, uh, you know selling coffee or if you're doing whatever, you can certainly knock on doors and go see people. But in our profession, we have chosen, uh, and, and I agree with it, that it's not appropriate to go and solicit rec scenes and go – and go to hospitals and try to get people to sign. That's considered inappropriate and under our ethical canons, uh, unethical. And so uh, while it does happen, uh, no one in this law firm will ever do it. Uh, but if, and if it did, they'll be gone immediately. But uh, if, um, you know, there are folks that, that still try to do that type of thing. But in other businesses, you know, uh, going out and selling your, your services are considered appropriate. And so that was, that's what I did back in the landscape days. <laughs> so I guess I'm, I'm not, I'm, I, I misunderstood the term solicit. Solicit means to proactively go offer your services, whereas advertising right. is completely different. What you're doing uh, in a mass market scale is advertising. Is that correct? 
That's exactly right. <clears throat> and there's there's standards that we uh, that we use uh, that we uh, and we it's rule 7.1, 7.2, 7.3 of the model rules. And the rules are uh, every state has them. They're all the same numbers, and uh, they they uh, direct us as to what is considered appropriate and what is considered not. And um, you know they're. A lot of people have opinions of advertising. Uh, I believe it's absolutely necessary to get the word out, and I look at it as a public service for people that just do not know lawyers. And um, and I I look at it too as it helps to level the playing field for the little guy. And I consider my family the, the little guys. You know, we're uh, we're you know humble. My <laughs> going back to my dad. My dad you know worked at the paper mill. We lived. Uh, in Pritchard, Alabama, on Snyder Drive, behind the stadium over there. So uh, we're we're normal people like anybody else, and um, just didn't know anybody. So if we had had some bad injury, and and you know back in the 70s when I grew up, uh, you you didn't see lawyer ads, and uh, you did you just had to rely on you know asking questions and trying to find someone that could could handle your business. And you really didn't have firms like ours that focused their practice. Uh, solely on personal injury. You just didn't have that. Um, what is, of all the different advertising venues that you use, what do you feel is the one that's the greatest bang for the buck? What, what, what would be the one that you'd hate to see go? Well, I'll be honest with you, um, and, and most people wouldn't believe this, and I certainly don't mind sharing this, but uh, probably 70%, and I check it every month, let's go with 70% of our business is word of mouth. Yeah. And uh, it's because I took care of, uh, you know, and unfortunately you have generational situations where you've taken care of uh, mom and then now grandson has a problem and they're, they, you've taken care of their business and they're going to call you back. And so if, if I lost that, I would, you know, that's the old school way of doing it. And I think that's the best. Uh, but I really, uh, you know, am thankful for a good name. Uh, that you know we're we're very you know very very concerned about making sure folks are happy with us. Now, when people come in and they've had a situation that did not go their way, they're not happy, and we hope that they leave not happy, but we ha we hope that they leave made whole. And sometimes that leads to them being happy. Yeah, yeah, it's it's um, I can understand that. I'm curious about trends in your business. Are are there trends in the types of work that you take or trends in the way you advertise your services? Are there trends in the style of preparing cases? Most businesses are influenced by trends. In my seminar business, there was a big trend for a while of, Cam, we don't want a seminar, we want a TED Talk. And TED Talks were everywhere and all of us had to conform to TED Talks for a good long while. Are there <laughs> trends in your business that you kind of have to uh, operate within? Well, I, I hope that there are, and I, one of the trends that I see in ours, and I and I and I'm very excited about it because I think it helps the public, um, and that is the organization of law school of law firms, not schools, the organization of law firms, um, and that is there are there are companies out that, and we've we've had a particular company for a number number of years that is a management software company that helps keep your your company organized. So you may have, at Green and Phillips, you may have um, seven or eight people working on your case at, one, at any one given time. Uh, the old school way of doing it, the first uh, law practice that I worked in, uh, Mr. Mylon Engel, um, you know, old school lawyer, great man, former state senator, uh, Mr. Engel had file boxes everywhere, and we've all seen that if we've ever been to a law firm. Yes. Uh, if you walk, if you walk into Green and Phillips, you're not going to see file boxes, and, and you think people think, well, gosh, what do you, where are your files? The files are in the computer, and so you don't lose files. Uh, you 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 have a every day we have a particular uh, list of things. When I turn my computer on, it tells me what case needs what every day, and if I work my checklist for the day, and it moves my cases forward along with the other people. So I think a, a current trend is management software. I think that I encourage every every law firm to do it, to get it, and certainly not trying to sell the company, but I'm telling you this, <clears throat> it makes a difference in clients' results because you don't miss things and you don't let a file sit on your floor until the statute runs and you wind up missing the statute or you wind up hurrying in and 
you know, filing the case and not having everything together, and then you wind up not helping your client. Tell me about your growth plans. I know you have a big footprint here in your hometown of Mobile, Alabama. Are there any aspirations outside of this market? Can you franchise a law practice? Can you uh, grow it in some way that, you know, I know there are big law firms with different offices in different cities. Is that part of your schedule? Well, um, it, it is. And uh, as a matter of fact, we have experienced extreme growth over the past 10 years. Uh, we have doubled and doubled and doubled, and it's just been a tremendous growth. You know, we're, we're fortunate we have 10 lawyers, and we have probably around 60 staff members now. I'd have to check that, but uh, a lot of people that work here. And then we also, uh, the number 10 lawyer is in Atlanta. Uh, he is uh, this, this is a new, uh, a new situation. We've just, uh, uh, acquired this, this, uh, this firm here, uh, firm there. And, uh, so we will be growing into the Atlanta market. Uh, I don't know, um, if we will go to Birmingham, but likely we will, uh, do it right. We, we are slowly doing it. Uh, I think growing slowly, um, yeah, is appropriate. I had a guy one time tell me, you know, the, the turtle wins the race. Yeah. The rabbit doesn't always win the race. You know, the turtle that's slow and steady and methodical. And so I want to make sure that we do things appropriately, make sure that we support our lawyers. Uh, what I mean by supporting, supporting them with the, the proper personnel and the ability to to maximize clients' values and, and seek fairness. You know, we're seeking justice. That's the bottom line of what we're trying to do. We just want to you know, seek justice and, and, and level, you know, make people whole. And that's what we're looking for. But in doing that, we will be moving on into the Atlanta market. And we're excited about that opportunity. David Green is the founder and the CEO of Green and Phillips Law Firm here in Mobile. David, thank you so much for your time. This was very insightful. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for calling me. Take care. Folks, you're listening to What's Working, brought to you by Coastal Alabama Community College. I'll be right back with final comments. I think it's safe to say most Mobilians recognize the significance of the aviation industry in our local economy. We're home to many leaders in this field, and they need reliable and qualified employees. Did you know that Coastal Alabama Community College has a training center located at Brookley Field? Yes, they do. They have classrooms and faculty offices, work bays, and a learning center in the middle of Mobile's Aviation Hub. Coastal Alabama Community College offers over 30 classes in aviation, and they teach just about everything students need to know about aircraft constructions, maintenance, and repair. Upon completion of these programs, students are prepared for FAA certification. With so many courses offered, you can choose which career path suits you best. For more information, visit Coastal Alabama Community College's website at coastalalabama.edu. We'll be back. I'm Matt Armbruster with Ransom Ministries. We help people in our community that most others have given up on. Please donate your unwanted electronics to Ransom Recycling. We teach life skills, job readiness, and job creation through our electronic recycling program. We take anything with a cord. Find us at RansomMinistries.com or you can call us at 251-751-0044. What's Working with Cam Marston is brought to you by Stella Artois Beer. Stella Artois is a perfect beer for celebration. Nothing caps off a big sale, hitting your incentive goals, or a profitable quarter like a round of Stella's. Brewed first in 1708 as a special Christmas brew, today's Stella is a gift for everyone to enjoy year-round. Stella Artois. Find it wherever fine beer is sold. Hi there. I'm Josh Knoll with Gulf Coast Financial Advisors. As your business grows and you accumulate wealth, planning to protect your assets becomes more and more important. I work with individuals and business owners throughout Baldwin County to help them protect their prosperity. Call me today at 251-327-2124 or find us at gulfcoastfa.com. Securities offered through ProEquities, member FINRA, SIPC. I want to thank David Green for his time on the show today. Learned a lot, didn't know these things, hadn't had these types of conversations with attorneys like him before. 
And I appreciate his time and uh, his willing to share so much with us. Let's move from David Green to David Webb. David Webb is a commentator on the show. We're going to make sure he becomes more regular than he is today. His insights are always very welcome. And he teaches us today his opinions on digital personalities. Do you have a digital personality? I do. I bet you do too. What is a digital personality? It's a term used to describe your electronic identity. It is the you that others see when they come across the digital footprints you leave behind in Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, Pinterest, TikTok, YouTube, Reddit, and the plethora of other social media forums in existence today. Have you ever given much thought about your digital personality? Believe it or not, you are perceived online by others in a certain vein, good and bad. If it's generally good or neutral, you're in fine position. If it's negative, maybe it's time to clean it up, especially if you're associated with a business, which most of us are. How many times have you heard of people affecting their employment because they posted something that was derogatory or controversial on their personal page? Digital personalities can get the best of you if you're not careful. It's the human condition to boast, entertain, emote feelings, and back up positions in all kinds of matters, especially over the internet. But it's how you do all that which may need some pause or self-scrutiny. The internet is not as anonymous as you think. Ask yourself these questions. How are you representing yourself or your business online? What does your digital personality really look like? Are you coming across as positive or divisive? Are you entertaining and thought-provoking or mean-spirited and ornery? What kind of language are you using? What's your tone? Are you creating and fostering relationships or gradually eroding them with negativity? In today's society, it behooves all of us to be a little more patient and flexible with each other. I believe we should be mindful of what we post, how we treat people when responding to their posts, and what we let people see from our published social media pages. Just remember this, folks usually remember the negative posts and the responses that you've left behind online, way more than the nice ones. I want everyone today to pause for a brief moment and ask yourself, how is my digital personality perceived by others? Can I do anything to clean it up? Maybe shore up those frayed edges a little bit. We're all watching and we do form opinions, so let them be good ones. Let's all try to project more positive tone and pick up everyone in the process. Show some love in your next online posts and responses. Put some smiles on faces in your friend list today. This world could use a little more love and flexibility and a lot less rudeness and hate all around, including the interweb. That being said, y'all stay mindful of your digital personality. It's in everyone's best interest, including yours. Thank you, David Webb, for the commentary. That wraps us up for this week, folks. I want to thank John Thompson. He produces the show. His company is Eye on Digital, E-Y-E-O-N Digital. Check him out. John has been an ally of mine for years, and I'm grateful for his work. And I want to thank Kristen Ogden. Kristen puts these shows together, Mary's complex and complicated calendars, and gets us all on the same page to have these conversations. We'll have another show next week, everyone. Have a good week. Have a good week.